Well, hello everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of Farming Simulator 19 with me, Simulation for the Nation. The time has finally arrived. We made it here in the end and we are now... Well, we're now able to farm like never before. Let's put it that way, shall we? We are pushing through and uh, we're going to have a very quick episode here where we're going to have a look into the top five things that you should do as soon as you are able to uh, download... Uh, install and open up the game for the first time. There are a lot of new fantastic features, uh, new machines and new gameplay options that we will uh, get to at some stage. We'll probably skim over some of them today, we're not going to get into all of them, like I say, we're just going to look at the top five options uh, and we'll take a look at those in a little bit more detail. And some other videos from myself later on down the week, we are going to go into more and more of that information as we get to it. But what you will see is now we are uh, sitting atop of a monstrous, monstrous John Deere combine. We are in a John Deere 790S uh, series and it is colossal. Uh, I spec this one, out, this one out with dual wheels on the front. Uh, we have got a huge draper header, I believe this is 45 feet wide, uh, absolutely monstrous. Uh, and we are flying through some of our own wheat here which we have purchased. Uh, we'll get onto that in a little bit. Uh, but the first thing, the thing that's got the, a lot of the farm simulator community hyped from the announcement really was that Big Green are coming into FS19. Of course we're talking about John Deere here and they have not disappointed. Uh, we have got a wide array of, uh, of tractors available and uh, two fantastic looking combines. Uh, this being obviously the biggest one, the pride of the fleet, the new 790S series or S790 series and of course we have the T series which is a little bit smaller as well. Now you'll just notice the detail in the cab here of this combine really does look fantastic. That and the fact that when we when we do ride over bumps, the in-cab suspension is awesome. Really, really impressed with how that works. Uh, and we are combined. You can see here we are having some birds shoot out the, the uh, crop ahead of us. Uh, a lovely new feature. The interaction of wildlife is fantastic. Uh, but we're really going to spend a little bit of time focusing on the John Deere's here. Uh, we do have an 8400R series. Who knew that was coming? What a surprise. Uh, but that is pulling the grain cart over there. It's a wonderfully big looking piece of equipment. But what we're going to do in just a second here is we start to uh, start to unload the auger into the grain chaser. We'll go and have a bit of a better look at this, really. Uh, so we'll just stop that there. And as you can see in my mirrors there, you can see the auger is coming out. And there it is. I'm tipping into a an Elmer uh, cart today, uh, and we're going to we brought this up really so we can show the the John Deere off. Really, there are two other size, uh, three other size John Deeres. We have a six M series, which is the smallest of the fleet. Uh, a good utility yard tractor there with the option to have a front loader on. We have the six R series, and we have the uh, the seven R series as well. So a big variety of power depending on what we actually need to produce there. Uh, but let's just take a minute here to look at this John Deere. It is fantastically big and the detail on here is just glorious. I'm sure you will agree here that I really, really do like actually the detail on the header. It's probably one of my favorite parts. Well, the couplings, the, the uh, cabling that goes along to the uh, connectors on the feed house here. Just really quite something special. Uh, the Draper header you'll see does flex in the middle a little bit and it is just huge. Uh, we are really, really lucky. I believe to have John Deere in now because that opens the brand and opens the avenues for further mods so much. Maybe one day we'll see a little bit more implementation as well, so we'll, uh, we'll see some equipment they can use. That'll be fantastic. That's going to be something that's really going to, again, broaden the experience, broaden the range of uh, and the fleet of John Deere's. Um, but yeah, I, for one, am absolutely blown away by the detailed black combine. Similar things can be said for the uh, the tractors, like I say, the 8400R here. I love the way we have the uh, clamps for the dual wheels, I think that's really fantastic. Uh, now a lot of these, it would be said, a lot of this is like a European specification, not an American specification. Maybe one day we'll get to see that coming in as well. Uh, but yeah, it certainly does look fantastic from a European standpoint if we jump into the cab here again. Uh, we can see as we turn on it, our, our information pillar and our, um, our monitor are all in place. Everything is looking good. Um, and just a really, really nice job of detailing this, the interior of this, combine, uh, this tractor along with the combine. 
Moving on, so you have then now sampled everything to do with John Deere. That is great. What you're going to need is, um, you're going to need to put it into work, really, I suppose. And there's several different options for doing that. We are going to look into one of the newest features that I am really very interested in. FS17 saw the introduction of mission systems, of contracting, uh, but it was all very one-dimensional. You would have very few options as to what you could do and how you could actually complete that. FS19 sees that being blown wide open, ladies and gentlemen. It gives us the opportunity to use, have more tasks to complete, use our own equipment if you want, that you can save during it. There's no finite li uh, period of time in which to complete the mission. So read really does open up everything. It's uh, what was already a very financially rewarding uh, task, but it also was something that was um, allowed you to slowly expand your, your area of work, your land. Very same things apply, but with a lot more elements here. Uh, so as you can see here on our left hand side we have the list of contracts that are currently available to me. Uh, this is on land that I do not own. We have harvesting, some more uh, harvesting there, uh, of some potatoes. We've got some transport work which is a new aspect um, and we have a lot of fertilization and some more harvesting of some corn. Uh, so you can take upon any of these cha challenges. Uh, in the bottom corner here, it says you can either accept a contract, so you use your own equipment. You can lease the items there. You will receive a little bit less money. It stipulates the amount so uh, in the uh, bottom line of the main screen there. Uh, and that will allow you to lease all of the equipment needed for that job. You'll pick it up at the store and then you'll bring it straight on over to the field you are working in. Which I think is uh, generally a very, very good idea because if you want to build up your own fleet, you might not be there yet, so you need to borrow a few bits and pieces, get those in, do the jobs, get some more money in the bank, eventually buy your own equipment. Really is quite a nice idea there. Okay, so whilst uh, you've been playing with John Deere and whilst you've been looking into the contracting system, you will have noticed uh, item number three on this list here, the new terrain, and then more specifically though, the new foliage behavior. So, as we are in our little Mahindra ATV here, we're going to drive around, we're going to drive into this field of mine, Fortress next door. You can already see what I want to point out here, the fact that the foliage in front of the vehicle as we drive along is slowly uh, bent under the vehicle. Uh, now that is even more apparent than when we drive straight into my crop of uh, oilseed rape here, or no, into our new crop of oats here. Let's just look at that texture of a new crop there. We're going to be needing that in a little while and we'll show you why. Uh, but look at how the crop just bends under and then springs back up. Again, there is more wildlife in here, so we're going to drive around, scare out some of the birds in here, no doubt. But you can see how it's such a light, small vehicle there. It just flicks the crop under the vehicle, and I really do think this looks fantastic. What I would love to see with the uh, inclusion of wear and tear on the vehicles is that maybe we start to see the paint wear off the more you drive through foliage like this, uh, or through various different crops, because that looks fantastic to me. Uh, one of the best things about starting the game is when you start to spray the crops that are ready for harvest to increase their fertilization state and wow it just looks stunning it really really does uh, and it, hey, it makes crop walking that little bit easier now this is a crop of oats as I mentioned there we oats is a new crop to the game it has multi purpose it's a multi-purpose crop really you could sell it as you would normally however you can already store it and you can use it as feed now what you might need to feed um, you may be asking well, it's quite easy, to be honest. This guy, this is Jeff, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff is my horse. He is going to become quite the stallion. And we are going to go out for a walk now. But the reason we have Jeff here, Jeff is uh, obviously one of the many horses that are new to the game. You can breed them. You can uh, keep them. You can use them to ride around. Or you could sell them. Um, Jeff is a great uh, form of transportation to go and look at some crops. You can gently trot through the fields. Or if you're in a real hurry to go and look at your John Deere again, you can get Jeff clocking along quite nicely. He does need exercise daily in order to reach his full potential. Um, and you can do that by taking him out for a run just like this. Uh, Jeff is a fan of John Deere's and he also likes to eat a lot of hay and to have some company. So if you can get more than one horse, that is always ideal. Look how cool I am with my sunglasses on there. And finally, you may be wondering, SFTN, this is all wonderful. We've got some great machinery. I want to go and ride around Jeff. How are we going to do that? Where do I get my land from? How? Um, you seem to have quite a lot of fields here. I would like to get the same amount of fields. Well, it's quite easy to be doing, actually. Um, FS19 has seen... We've always, actually, in FS series, and FS15, 17, you've always been able to buy fields. However, in FS19, you can buy and sell whole blocks of land, which is something that has been 
almost overlooked really for last uh, for previous seasons or previous versions of this game and now that we have it in game it's it's almost um, criminal to think that it wasn't there in the first place what a jump um, so what we are able to do we can go and buy a plot of land we see that we want to work in uh, and we not only buy that plot of land but you also get everything else so for example this little field here, you buy the field, but you get all of the grassland around the outside. Any trees that are on that land, they become your trees to cut down for forestry if you would like. Any buildings on that land, you can use those buildings to um, store vehicles in if it's permittable. Um, so it's there's a lot of great features there. Uh, you can really expand the fields, you can expand where you can build a farm. Uh, using a brand new placeable system that we will get into in more depth in a later video. Uh, but there's plenty here to do with the land feature. To use it, it's all very simple. You quite simply come into the main menu here, uh, where you see lands. You quite you click on the lands. Now you can see the fi the fields that I've bought for the purpose of this video. Uh, and then if you want to buy another one, you can kind of see how it's all split up into little sections. So we have a section there, we have a section here. You can kind of pick exactly which one you would like to use. All you do, quite simply, assuming you've got enough money, you can select the the field in question. Uh, and then you just hit buy. Uh, you buy the land and you, congratulations, you're a landowner. You now own everything else in that block. So it really does allow you to have a vast array of uh, f options when you buy a field. One of the new game modes that we're going to be getting into in detail over the course of this week is start from scratch. And you will need to do that first before you can do anything else. So it's always something very much worth looking into. For now though, this has just been a very quick video detailing exactly what we can get up to throughout the course of FS19. Uh, I'm going to be saying FS17 for as long as I can think, so do bear with me for that one. Uh, stay tuned throughout the rest of the week because there will be plenty more coming up where we're going to look into some of the new um, game modes. We're going to look into John Deere, the brand, in more detail. Uh, and we're going to start with some great new series I have lined up as well. So stick around for that. I have been Simulation for the Nation. I do hope you have enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you've yet to do so. And I'll see you in the next one.